Hello, and welcome to Newbury Generation Friday Night Live. We are gathered together from our homes to have a time of just getting together and talking about Jesus and having a Bible study so that we can learn and grow to become more like Jesus because that's what it is to be a Christian, is to be Christ-like. So Miss Tia has the word for us tonight. She'll be ministering tonight. We look forward to hearing from her. And let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. So Father, we thank you for this opportunity to just get together. Even though we can't be together physically, we are together online and it's a way of communicating with one another. And we thank you for your faithfulness to us, Lord, that you meet us wherever, wherever we gather to meet you. You are there with us. Yes, Jesus. It does not matter if we're separated physically. We are connected by you. So, yes. Father, I pray that you would just pour out your spirit here tonight. Yes. And for those who are watching this later, I pray you would touch their hearts and just surround yes. them with your love and let them know how much they are loved by you, no matter yes. what has happened in their life, no matter what they've done, no matter no matter what. Yes. You love them and you yes. are longing for them to turn to you. Yes. I thank you, Father, that you never give up on us. Thank and you, your Jesus. love for us is eternal. Yes. Because we are your creation. So I pray your blessing upon Tia as she brings yes. your word tonight. Pray your anointing upon her and lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit in this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, amen. Tia, I am going to turn it over to you. All right. Hi, guys. Hello. Okay, so Joshua, how old is Joshua? What, where'd he go? I think he's 19. Is he 19? If not yet, soon to be. Or, oh, okay. He's 19. Okay, so 19. And Joshua, you were born in November, right? Okay, so he'll be 20 in November. So I'm only asking that because there's only five of us on here. And me, Cindy, and Jerry are all above the age of 19. And Faith is not yet. And Joshua won't be, he'll be 20, so he turned not, he was born in November. So there's only three of us that's on Zoom tonight that will know the significance of today. Oh, Nine yeah. 11. We had this discussion with Zachary um, yesterday, actually, when he was going through, well, you know, mom and dad, you guys didn't have to deal with the pandemic when you went through school. And we were like, no, we had to deal with other things. And this is one of those events that we had to deal with. Well, I was in high school. So 9-11 is very significant to us. It's a, it's a major event in history. And whenever you think about events in history, like this is one that was very, very, uh, it was just a big, huge event for us. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was watching part of a YouTube video, letting Zachary see some of the stuff. And I just, I just kept, I just started crying. Yeah. But if you ask, if you would ask me, if you would ask Cindy or Jerry, because we were born and alive, every one of us could tell you where we were, what we were doing, whenever we found out the information, whether it was on the news, the radio, I was in high school. I was in class. And like I told Zachary, we didn't have class that day. It was almost as if the whole day had been frozen. Yeah. Time was frozen. And everybody was glued to the TV. In fact, I worked at Chick-fil-A. It was my first job. And after I left school, I went to work. And they had a little TV sitting out there in the lobby with the news on it. And everybody was watching the news. Everybody was listening to the radio in the car. So this, that was a major event in history for us. Mm -hmm. And like I said, just watching the videos just brought tears. I mean, back then in high school, 
you know, I mean, I didn't, I don't know that I really realized how horrible it was, what exactly was going on, you know, because I mean, to me, it was something that was happening somewhere else, not near, not near me, happening somewhere else. But now as an adult, I look back and I'm like, oh my word. So this day has significant for us. It's very significant. Mm -hmm. Just like if you were to ask me, Jerry or Sandy or most moms, you can recall pretty much the entire birth of every child, no matter how many you have, the differences, yeah. what you were doing, all this stuff, because it's a major event in your life. So when events happen that are major to us, it's, as, it's almost as like you can recall that entire day. Aaron laughed at me because when I, um, I don't know if I, with Olivia, I had to, I had a, I got up that morning, I did, gave myself a facial. I mean, you know, I did it all. And so, I mean, that when a major event like that happens, people talk about it. People remember it you remember like such detail about mm -hmm. different aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. So I came across this, uh, like, you know, when you're flipping through Facebook or whatever, and Toby Mac had this up and um, it was just like one of those little signs or that you, you know, you just kind of read uh -huh. like a quote, quote type thing. And it said, um, you will never look into the eyes of someone God does not love. Wow. And that sign is stuck with me. I can't, I don't even remember when I saw it, but I just remember reading it. Mm -hmm. And that sign has that whole, that whole quote. I don't even know who said it. That's a good one. But it has stuck with me. And then when I realized I was going to end up sharing today, um, last month I ended up, I realized I was going to share today and then it was 9-11 and I was like, wow. Even though the event was horrific on 9-11, 19 years ago today, I still can't believe it's been that long, but 19 years ago today, uh -huh. the terrorists, the, the people on board of the planes and they were still people that God loved. I mean, you know, you don't think about it. How can a person that is that has those intentions is that I almost want to say evil. Deceit. Yes. But God loved them just like he does me. Yeah. He loves. I mean, and so then I started thinking about other events in life. And there's another event that happened that we still talk about today. And I'm sure if you could go back years, people could tell you what they were doing when they, when, when everything was happening, where they were at. I mean, we all have like an imagination and we can all think, but you know, I mean, so there's another event and we still talked about today. And that was the death of Jesus mm -hmm. on the cross. Uh -huh. Even the people that were around screaming and hollering to kill him, still, if you look into their eyes, it was someone that God loved. And so it just like really struck me with the events of, of history. And so anyway, so Cindy shared, um, I'm pretty sure last week she read a verse, John three sixteen. Wasn't that one of the verses that you read? I think so think it was so I started looking it up in the Bible so John three sixteen and 17 I'll just read it real quick I have it right here in my notes it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life that's John three sixteen. everybody should know that verse uh -huh. and then, then on verse 17 for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world uh -huh. but that the world through him might be saved. Another major event in history. Yes. 
then I started looking it up and I was like, there's, there's so much more on this. Um, the, the verses in the Bible that talks about how God loves us. Mm. First John verses chapter four, verses nine and 10. And then I'm, I'm going to read what I found um, from a commentary, uh, David Guziak. I love reading his stuff, but I, I really liked what he, what he put. But first John chapter four, verses nine through 10. And it says, I love this very beginning. I'm reading, I did the new King James version. Um, but in verse nine, the first, the first is in this, the love of God. I love that. Uh-huh. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us. That God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Then you read verse 10 and it does it again. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be the, now, now Cindy, here's a word that we learned in Bible, in, in Bible college. He sent his son to be the propitiation that I said or yep <laughs> for our sins. I love that. In this, the love of God, and then in the very next word, in this is love. So David Guziak says this, talking about the verse nine. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God sent His only begotten Son. He says this shows us that love. I'm sorry. This shows us what love is and what it means. Love is not only defined by the sacrifice of Jesus. It is also defined by the giving of the father. It was a sacrifice for the father to send the second person of the Trinity Uh and a sacrifice to pour out the judgment we deserved upon God, the son. Uh And it goes on, he says, we need to appreciate the fully, we need to appreciate this fully and receive the fatherly love God has to give us. Some of us, for whatever reason, have come to think of God the Father as aloof and mean, perhaps the so-called anger or angry God of the Old Testament. In this wrong thinking, Many imagine they prefer the nice and loving Jesus instead, but the father loves too. And the love Jesus showed in his ministry was the same love God, the father has toward us Uh. receive the healing power in our father's love. Mm. And so he also went on to say in verse um, 10, it says that we might live through him. The love of of the Father was not only in the sending of the Son, but also in what that sending accomplishes for us. It brings life to all who trust in Jesus and his work on their behalf because he is the propitiation for our sins. And it says right here, propitiation has the idea of a sacrifice that turns away the wrath of God. Uh God rightly regarded us apart from him as worthy targets of his judgment. We were rebels and enemies of him, even if we didn't know it. But on the cross, Jesus took the punishment our sin deserved. His sacrifice turned away the judgment we would have received. We easily think how this shows the love of Jesus, but John wants us to understand it shows the love of God, the father. He loved his son. He loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our, of our sins. So when we think about that major event in history, I, I am sure if we could go back and ask any of those people, they can tell you, where they were at, what they were doing. And if you read in the Bible, I was reading earlier, um, I think it was in Matthew. It talks about how, you know, in certain hours of Jesus, when he was on the cross, um, you know, that it was dark. The world was dark. 
-hmm. And then after he gave up his life, because nobody took it from him, he gave it up. After he gave up his life, the whole earth shook, yeah. you know, and there was this major event that happened. So it got me thinking on that quote that everybody, and then Faith was sharing about her job today, right when we got on. And I'm like, that is so perfect because everybody has hard days at work. Everybody has hard days in general. It's just life. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you do. Yeah. You will still always have a hard day. I mean, it could be on a Saturday where you're in the best mood when you wake up. Everything seems to be going right. And you, then you go shopping. And you deal with the public. And you're out there and you got this, you know, person over here who's running all over you with a buggy or something. Or, you know, they're, you want to stop and look in this aisle, but now you can only walk one way. So... You know, you walked the right way down the aisle. You went all the way around just so you could get down the aisle the right way and have somebody else come right up, you know, the wrong way. You know, or not wear a mask and start coughing. And you're like, oh, my goodness, you're supposed to have a mask on. You know, but that is still a person yeah. that God loves. No matter what they're doing, no matter how bad they treat you or what they're doing in this world. And right now, this world has has gone a little crazy for me. But the people out there, even though the people who are writing and causing all this chaos, God still loves them just as much as he does you. If they were to turn their life around, he would save them. Mm -hmm. Just like that. I mean, no questions asked. No matter if you've been saved 10 years and they just got saved, he would still do it because he loves them just, just as much. Yes. Absolutely. So anyway, that's, that's my message for tonight. I know it's quick and simple like always, but, but that's, that's just my message is I just saw that and I just fell in love with that whole quote. That's good. That's so good. You know, and I was just thinking today, uh, well, I don't always um, feel led to pray for certain things. I, I mean, I can honestly say, I mean, I know the Bible says that we are to pray for those that are in prison and things like that. But today specifically, I don't know. I just had a burden for people who are, uh, incarcerated, who are behind bars and who just, I don't know, like a compassion feeling, uh, or sense of compassion. I mean, it's the Lord had, obviously, uh, just reminding me of what you're just saying, that they're just, he loves all of us, and his love and his salvation is extended into all, to all mankind, and he will forgive when we, when we, we almost can't, you know, yeah. and so like I said, I just really praying. I was like, gosh, wow. I had just such a heart in my mind. I was just like seeing people behind bars and just for hideous, heinous crimes. And just like, but it's a life. It's a soul. It's a person that Jesus, his blood covers, covers it. You know, if that person will turn to Jesus for salvation, no matter how bad, ugly black scarlet well i don't know if scarlet is black but anyway no matter how dark he will save he can save to the uttermost so the i like how pastor rocky said it before we're all his favorite like i'm his favorite jerry there's no other jerry that he's made cindy you're his favorite cindy tia you're his favorite tia faith joshua others we're all his favorite because we're only us uh -huh. but the love of god it is beyond when we try to look at it and measure it in the ways that we in our conditional way of doing you know 
it is it's such a poor comparison and you can't really use that as the standard you really have to set you have to look at god's love yeah as its own beautiful thing makes me think of the greatest commandment when they asked him i'm looking it up matthew 22 where I think pastors talked about this on Sunday, or might have been Wednesday, but recently, where one of the Pharisees came up to Jesus and they were trying to trip him up. Because this is this is so funny when you read this. I mean, Jesus is God, right? He knows everything. So in verse 35. Well, here we go. Verse 34. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, that was another um, sect of the religious leaders, the Pharisees got together. And one of them, an expert in the law, the religious law, the law, the law of God as from the Old Testament, tested him, Jesus, with this question. Teacher, which it wasn't a respectful teacher way that he addressed Jesus. It's like almost sarcastic teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law. And Jesus replied, and y'all, all of you know this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we love others with God's love, everybody, I am Father Lord. everybody, you wouldn't, we would have no need for prisons. We'd have no need for courtrooms. Um, you know, because everyone will be treating each other with God's love. Now, I, that's what heaven will be like. But it's not like that here on earth. But you know what? It is our responsibility as a Christian to love everyone with God's love. No matter who they are. And that's why I think like that whole quote just like struck me. Because if you remember that you're looking at a person that God loves just as much as he loves you, I think it makes it, I want to say almost easier to love them with that type of love because you're not looking at them as oh this is what you're doing like you're not looking at them i guess as labeling what their sin is uh -huh. you're looking at them completely different yes like you were saying like you're taking the scales off of almost like your own eyes and being able to see Did you talk uh -huh. about that last that last friday you know i think we did a little bit <laughs> But that's so crucial. Love, we are, that's what we are to show. That when people see that love and the light of God in us, that's how, that's how they know we're Christians. That's, that, that's, what, that's what tells people that we belong to God because we're reflecting his love in this world no matter what. I tell you something. I had a revelation about a week ago. I don't know how y'all do, but when someone is hurting me and they keep hurting me, and it's somebody that I have to be around, I can't avoid this person or a person who is you know when you get you get hurt because of the way somebody treats you. I tend to withdraw and might call it the silent treatment. And I just avoid as much contact with that person as possible. But the Lord revealed, and I, I do, I'm a lot better than I used to be. I used to be really bad at it. Uh, it it's a way of protecting myself. It's a defense mechanism, but it's not a healthy defense mechanism. And it goes completely against what Jesus teaches us. 
you know, we are to communicate and love and not withhold love from anybody. Because what he showed me, when I'm withholding love and affection from someone, I'm, it's, not, it's not my love that I'm withholding. I'm withholding God's love from people. And we are to love everyone, no matter what. Maybe before I go to heaven, I'll have that down to where I do it all the time. But right now, it's still in progress in me, learning to love and choosing to love and show God's love to everybody, no matter what. Does anybody else have that problem? Yes. And I can say that, Cindy, when we can make that choice, that God will supply the love. Yes, he will. When we say, when we determine that we're not going to do it off our feelings, our, our, you know, our, our getting in the flesh realm, or our, our, our just limited love that we have as a human, and, and we've, we look at that and we say, it's impossible. I don't feel that. I don't love. But when we look at what God has told us to do and in obedience, we say, Lord, I will, I will start stepping and doing actions. He will bring yeah. the love up behind to, to come out. And that's a, that's really a beautiful, that's a miracle. Really. When you look yes, at that, how he does that, he is works in very miraculous ways. That is not just, things that we might necessarily, it's that internal stuff, that unseen stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yes, and I'm not there yet either, uh, all the way. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm at that place of learning that it's better to make that choice to go in that direction of love and saying, Lord, I don't feel like it, but I know what your word says. And I just trust that you'll help me to love. Yeah. Because it brings a better outcome on the other end of it. It always does. Always, always, always does. And just to learn by that. And, um, but man, it is hard sometimes. Cool. T to make that uh, choice. To take the high road. And, and to, you know, once we make that choice, it flows, it begins to flow. Yes. But the enemy is always trying to do anything he can to stop that flow of God's love going out from us. Whether mm -hmm. it's people we work with, whether it's our family members, or just somebody like T was talking about in the grocery store who is being rude. <laughs> but we don't know what's going on in that person's life. We don't know why they're acting the way they are. Um, you know, we don't know what's behind what people's experiences are. All that matters as a Christian is that we show God's, it's, it's, we're commanded to. We're commanded to. And it's a sacrificial love. It's doing, it's a love that, that is put into action, as Jerry said. It's not by feeling, although the feelings will come sometimes. Many times, have you ever felt just overwhelmed with love for someone? Yes. And especially as, as mothers with our children, you just feel this rush of love. Yes. Or, or with your spouse or, and even love for like Jerry today, you said you felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to pray for those in prison. Yes. That was an act of love. Yes. The, the yes. Lord just dropped that in your spirit. Yes. And it makes it so when he does that, you know, that is, it's just like, I, I just couldn't help but pray. It was like, he just put a, a and so I, I, I want to like, Lord, drop that. I'm willing to receive that burden. Drop that more into my life so that I do pray with that true love and compassion of you for things that are going on in, in unseen realms that only you know. And, and you you help me to be able to pray and, and to extend uh, 
compassion in prayer out to people. Anybody else have anything you'd like to share? This is a journey, being a Christian, it's a journey of, of learning. I say this so much. It's, it's a journey of learning to be more like Jesus and choosing to love. It's a choice. It's a choice. Love, it's a choice. Like forgiveness is a choice. Love is a choice. And it's not just for others. It's for us too. Faith? Oh. Um. Uh, hold on, give me a second. I have to rethink my sentences. So, um, when I was at work, you know, I told you the whole story of all of that, and that, well, most of the story of all of that, but, um, I, I didn't get to mention about, um, what God did in that moment, because, you know, it, it was just quick, and then, yeah. <laughs> But um, sorry. Uh, I whenever I was washing dishes because my manager told me to like go and wash them. Um, I just started praying. I was just like, God, please forgive them, please. And then, um. And then I said, please bless my manager. And then I remembered a verse, Matthew something. It was Matthew, Matthew. Uh, but it was something like, um, bless your enemies. Um, is it okay if I look it up while you guys are talking? Yes, go ahead. I know that verse. That's a good one. Do look it up. Mm -hmm. it's and, and what a time today on 9-11. On Why are you looking that up, Faith? Why am I looking that up? I said, while, while you're looking that up. Let me know when you've got it. All right. Oh, <laughs> found it. Okay. <laughs> so Matthew 5-44. But I tell you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you. Mm, that's an awesome verse. Yeah. And that goes right along with what Tia was saying. You know, just how he's died for everybody. You know, love your enemies. Is that how it starts? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, I mean, would I think we would consider the, you know, the Muslim extremists or or people who are terrorists and doing, we could consider those kind of like an enemy. And he's saying, love your enemies. Um, let me see. Look at the verse again. I'm in John. Yeah, Matthew 5:44. It says that in, in some manuscripts, I got a note down at the bottom, a footnote. It says in some manuscripts it reads, Love your enemies, bless those who curse you. And do good to those who hate you. Yeah, and in verse 45, right after that, it says, in that way, you will be acting as the children of your Father in heaven. Yes. <laughs> For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust. If you only love those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that. If you're kind only to your friends, how are you different from everyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. 
So, yeah. and we, and we do that through obviously. And I think pastor Vanjie was sharing on that some on Sunday too, just, it's not us. It's, it's the Lord in us. Yeah. It's his love, his love. And if we just will yield and say, I can't do it, help me, you do it. But willing to allow him yeah. to prefer others over ourselves, willing to, to do that, he, w- he will come through on his end. If we'll do our part, he'll do his part. Yes, he will. But it does take <laughs> effort. You know, it's it's a it's allowing the Holy Spirit saying that we can't do it, that's a lie. It is because we can, because the Holy Spirit lives in us. Someone said told me recently as an excuse, they were saying, Well, I am what I am. I said, No, you are what you choose to be. We can always change. And as Christians, we can choose or not choose to flow in the love of God. It's like that river of living water that Mm -hmm. flows out of us. And if we choose to, we can dam it up. Yes. We can build a dam in our spirit where we don't let it flow out for for lots of reasons because of being hurt being angry, which angry and hurt, angry is just the flip side of hurt. So the angriest person you know is the one who's hurting the most. But there, uh, there are unforgiveness. There are just so many, re- so many sins that can build that dam to stop the flow of the Holy Spirit in us. It's when we're thinking about us and not others wow yes and we jesus is our example because he came he gave his life for us for everybody all of mankind yes we gotta remember this we gotta keep this in the forefront of our our minds and our hearts to live out his love to everyone. It's a choice. Huh. You got something else, Jerry? I was just looking at uh, John 15, um, 7, and it just says, and this is Jesus speaking. He says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is my... F- This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciple. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. Mm. And he he's we're in him, he's in us. It's there. It's it's a resource. He's not asking us to do something. Why would God ever ask us to do something? that he didn't equip us or give us the, the, the means to do yeah. that. That's not, that's an unjust God. He, that wouldn't even be right. He's not asking us to come up with something that we don't have. He's saying as, but when I, when you're born again and I'm and the Holy spirit moves in it, you've just opened up a conduit of unlimited resource to love yourself to love the unlovable around you. Mm-hmm. And I love, uh, whoa, what happened? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> My throat just closed. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> okay, I almost forgot what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> I've been posting a lot on my Facebook about uh, the worship leader, Sean. Can't remember his last name. But you see me, he's been leading worship services in the cities where the riots have been taking place. And uh, local pastors come alongside him. And it's just 
in the in a place that's full of well, all we see in the media is the violence and the hatred. And then he comes in and, and so many other Christians, we're talking thousands of Christians worshiping and just loving, showing God's love. That's what we are to do. Mm. And people are being saved. People are being healed. Uh, it, it's just, oh, he's. I think he's in Washington, no, he's in New York. He's in New York today. But I keep posting his videos because it's so encouraging to me. It just, my heart leaps when I see God's people out there in the midst of the chaos and the confusion and the violence and, and the, the hate that is being spewed out right now. But it's all from the enemy because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against the powers and principalities of evil. We, that is where the battle is, is against the demonic forces that have deceived people. But God's love overcomes all. Mm. Faith, what you did at work the other night, that was exactly the right and the best thing for you to do. Mm. To start praying. Yep. And here's the cool thing I like about wearing a mask. I can pray in the Holy Spirit behind the mask and nobody knows I'm praying. I can walk through a store and I'm just praying the Holy Spirit. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. But I can, it changes the atmosphere around me mm -hmm. when I'm praying the Holy Spirit. So, anybody else? One little thing, Tia, you were talking about the love of the father and you know, I just, for us, and you look at the, the garden, you know, the garden of, uh, of, of, uh, the garden of Eden. Yes. <laughs> for a second there, the garden, the garden of Eve. No, that's not the garden of Eve. <laughs> that's the garden of Eden. <laughs> and just how God reached out to save them from themselves after committing the, after basically bringing death, opening the door on that for all of us and how God, the father reached out and, um, made a way, you know? Yeah. I mean, I know they were all three, you know, to dissect it all out, but God, the father loves us. God, the son loves us. God, the Holy spirit loves us. Yes. Yeah. I think sometimes people want to think that Jesus is separate, but it's, it's the second tr person in the Trinity. Mm -hmm. It's not like God's over here. Jesus is over here, you know, and, you know, God's the one who does this, this, and this. Jesus does this, this, and this. It's it's a full trinity. And Jesus is just God the Son, which is the second person in the trinity. You know, like God was here on earth. Because it talks about how God walked in the afternoons with Adam and Eve in the garden. Well, then God sent the second person of the trinity. And now God sent the third person of the trinity, which is God, the Holy Spirit. I yes. love how it's yeah. divided out like that, but it's not truly divided. It's, it's one, but it's, yeah. I like how it is like that. Hmm. And oh, that all people would know his love and know how much they are valued, that their value yes, and is he, found in him. And he loves everybody from yeah. the beginning of time up until the end of time yes the exact same like i mean that you can go out like i said it's just it just amazes me you know that even the terrorists that created all the chaos 19 years ago god loved them god loved them yes i mean they made their own choices but god loved them yes 
Yes. And it says that he's not willing that any should perish. That's right. And he's, it's very humbling. I mean, it keeps, it, it, it helps us. Like, was it you, Cindy, that said it earlier? Or maybe it was you, Tia, that every, I think it was you, Tia, that every person you look at in the eyes, you're mm -hmm. looking at someone that's loved. And I mean, because they're not, we're not, God made us, you know, so he, he, he made us, he doesn't, he didn't make us to make bad choices and bring hideous stuff on ourselves by our bad choices, but he made us, he's the giver of life. Yes. That never hit me so strong as when I had children. When I, there came Nathaniel, I, it was the most profound. I know moms and I'm sure Faith, your mom too, when she saw you, you just, my jaw, spiritually speaking, hit the floor. I'm like, oh, this is a, a live child that has been grown and fingernails, eyelashes, you know, l a little smiles. And it's just like miracle, God. God created that child. I did not. He has made us. We have not made ourselves. Mm -hmm. He has the glory for all of that. And just look at all the 7 billion people, like you said, Tia, those that have come and gone. God is the giver of life. God, those are his. Well, there's that verse in the Bible too that says, how can you say you love your, and like you curse the thing that God has made. Yeah. You can't do that. But yes, only if it's, again, just coming back to that place of us individually taking responsibility for our lives and our relationship with the Lord and us being in tune with his spirit. And as I think as Pastor Vanjie said, you know, we don't walk in unity with others till we're walking in unity with, with, with God. That's right. And us taking responsibility for that and saying, I'm going to do my part on this earth, Lord, to, to represent who you are through me. And it's, it's about you. Yes. Yeah. I, and I just, I knew in first John, first John, the apostle John talks about the love of God more than any other apostle. Um, I had it written down one time how many times he mentioned the word love. And we're talking about the agape love, God's love, mm -hmm. in First John. And this is a little bit further down from what you were reading, Tia. But in First John, verse 16, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. And it sums it up. God is love. Mm -hmm. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. And remember this, the prayer out of uh, the gospel of John that Pastor Vange has been teaching off the past two Wednesdays, that Jesus prayed over his disciples and over the future believers in him for us to be one with the father as to be one with him as he is with the father mm. for us to be one so whoever lives in love lives in god and god in him in this way love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him there's no fear in love but perfect love drives out fear and then go down to verse 19. We love because he first loved us. And then what you were saying, Jerry, in verse 20. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. Mm. And he has given us this command, it's not a choice. This is a command. It's our choice to obey this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. 
And who is your brother? It is everybody mm -hmm. that we come in contact with. That's the context of it. Yeah. So God is love. We can love because it's his love in us. This world love, the, you know, when people, the love that you see on the movies and the romance and all that, that's not love. God's love is love. Mm -hmm. Love that is sacrificial love. Mm. It's a high level love. Rick, that's what Rick Renner calls it. It's the highest level love. And it lives, his love lives in us. Mm, 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 so we can give his love out to others. Everybody. Not just the ones we want to. Everybody. Especially the ones, yeah, especially the ones that are the tough ones. Especially. And who oh boy. And I'm um, so thankful that God is very patient with me. And all of us, as we're learning how, as we're choosing to walk and live in his love. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, Tia, would you like to close it? Does anybody else have anything else they'd like to share? <laughs> all right. Tia, would you please close us? Yeah, give me a right. second. Okay. All right. Sorry, I hit something. I don't even know what I hit, but whatever it was, it took me off of there. Yeah, we can close in prayer. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you have brought to us and for being patient with us and just for loving us the way that you do and for just allowing us to have time to learn to love people the way you have intended for us. Yes, Jesus. And we just thank you for this day. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We ready for the Lord's Prayer? Yes. It sounded last time, last week, it was like almost in unison. Which it I know is different because there's like a time delay between all of our different computers. But let's go ahead. Go ahead and try it. Tia, would you lead us out? Uh -huh. Our Father, Father, who is in who heaven, is in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come. Thy will, come. Be, thy will done. be done on earth, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Is in heaven. And give us give this us day, day our daily, daily bread. bread. And forgive us and of our sins. Our sins. Yeah. And we and forgive we those, those who sin against us. us. And lead us not it's into not temptation. But to deliver us from, from evil, deliver us from the kingdom, kingdom the power, the power, and glory, and glory, and glory and forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and close out for tonight. And um, we'll talk just a little bit. If I don't end it all like I did last week, <laughs> I hit the wrong button last week. Oh, there goes everybody. But we'd like to, those of you who are watching this video, I hope you know God's love. And if you don't, we want you to know, God wants you to know that he loves you with an everlasting love. If you don't know him, he's wanting to get to know you. Well, he already knows you. He's wanting you to get to know him. It'll be the most important decision that we ever make in our life is to choose to believe that Jesus is the son of God who came to this earth sent by his father God to be the sacrifice for our sin. Yes. He had done nothing wrong, but he came to give his life on the cross, to take the punishment for our sin, the sin of all of mankind, so that we could be saved, so that our sin could be forgiven. So he gave his life on that cross, and even when he was giving his life on that cross, he looked out at those who were persecuting him, 
who had uh, become so angry and wanted him to be crucified. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Because if they had really known, if they had really, really known that he and believed that he was the son of God, they would not have wanted him killed. But it had to be fulfilled so that he could be the sacrifice for our sins so that we could have eternal life and our sin be forgiven through him. And it's very simple. The plan of salvation is believing that Jesus is the son of God, that he gave his life on the cross and died for our sin. And on the third day, he was resurrected so that we will also have eternal life with him. And do you know that now he sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven and he is praying for all of us. He is interceding. That's a type of prayer where he's praying for all of us. Yes. That we will all turn to him. He's praying for us to be strengthened, for us to be helped. And it's only through him, only through Jesus, that we will know true love, true joy, true peace, what we're all looking for in this life. It's all found in him. I hope that you will ask him into your life and into your heart. He's waiting. And if you have known him, maybe you've been saved and you've gone away from him, you've been doing your own thing, or maybe you've just been become very disappointed and don't understand why things have happened to you or why people have hurt you like they have, cry out to him. Come back to him. In him you will find the love that you're looking for. In him you will find the acceptance that you're looking for. And he will heal you. Today's verse on the, uh, the YouVerse devotional was that he came to heal the brokenhearted. I love that. Mm -hmm. And he's the only one that can heal our broken hearts and our broken lives. Mm -hmm. And he will. Mm -hmm. All of us here tonight, we've experienced it firsthand. We know. So, we hope that you'll join us next Friday. Same time, same place on Zoom at 6.30 p.m. And we look forward to seeing you then. We love you all and good night.